Hi class! Today, we're going to deal with respiratory and circulatory systems working with other organ systems. At the end of this module, you are expected to explain the mechanism on how the respiratory and circulatory systems work together to transport nutrients, gases, and molecules to and from the different parts of the body and infer how one's lifestyle can affect the functioning of respiratory and circulatory systems. Let us start the discussion. Respiratory system is made up of the organs in the body that help us to breathe. Just remember that the word respiration is linked to breathing, while circulatory system is responsible for distributing materials throughout the body. Take note that circulation means transportation or movement in circles. Both systems are essentially meant for each other. The common purpose could not be attained without the other system. Let's start the discussion of the human breathing system. The parts of the respiratory system that are in charge of supplying oxygen are the nose, nasal passageways, windpipe, lungs, and diaphragm. In the nose and nasal passages, the entering air is made warm, damp, and clean of unknown particles. Next, the air moves down through the trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, and alveoli. Trachea is the empty tube that serves as passageway of air into the lungs. Bronchi are the two branching tubes that connect the trachea to the lungs. Bronchioles are the hair-like tubes that connect to the alveoli, while alveoli are the air sacs that allow gas exchange in the lungs. After respiratory system, let us now talk about the human circulatory system. The circulatory system is the life support structure that nourishes your cells with nutrients from the food you eat and oxygen from the air you breathe. It can be compared to a complex arrangement of highways, avenues, and lanes connecting all the cells together into a neighborhood. Sequentially, the community of cells sustains the body to stay alive. Another name for the circulatory system is the cardiovascular system. The circulatory system functions with other body systems to deliver different materials in the body. It circulates vital elements such as oxygen and nutrients. At the same time, it also transports waste away from the body. The three major parts of the circulatory system with their roles. 1. Heart. It pumps the blood throughout the body. Number 2. Blood vessel carries the blood throughout the body. It has three different types. Arteries carry oxygenated blood away from the heart to the cells, tissues, and organs of the body. Veins carry the oxygenated blood to the heart. Capillaries, the smallest blood vessels in the body, connecting the smallest arteries to the smallest veins, the actual site where gases and nutrients are exchanged. And the last part of circulatory system is blood. It carries the materials throughout the body. After the different parts of the circulatory system, let us now talk about the circulation. There are three different types of circulation. Number one, pulmonary circulation. Movement of blood from the heart to the lungs and back to the heart. Number two, coronary circulation. Movement of blood through the tissues of the heart. And number three, systemic circulation, movement of blood from the heart to the rest of the body, excluding the lungs. Another interesting topic is the human heart. Do you know how big your heart is? Take a look at your fist. The heart is a hollow muscle which is just as big as your fist. It has four chambers with specific tasks to do, two ventricles and two atria. The atria are the receiving chambers of the heart, accepting blood from the body and from the lungs. The ventricles are the pumping chambers, moving blood to the lungs and into the body. The heart has two pumps. Each pump has two chambers, the upper and lower chambers. 
The upper chamber is the atrium that receives blood coming in from the veins. The lower chamber is the ventricle that forces the blood out into the arteries. There is a valve between each atrium and ventricle to prevent the blood from flowing backwards. The valves are like one-way doors that keep the blood moving in only one direction. Valves control movement of blood into the heart chambers and out to the aorta and the pulmonary artery. Effects of unhealthy lifestyle Another risk factor that drastically increases heart rate and decreases the amount of oxygen in the blood is smoking cigarettes. Key concepts to remember. Cigarette smoking harms nearly every organ in the body, causing many illnesses and affecting health in general. The negative effects of smoking on circulatory system include increased heart rate and blood pressure, coronary heart disease, arterial sclerosis, and vascular diseases. The respiratory diseases caused by smoking are chronic bronchitis, emphysema, asthma, cough, colds, tuberculosis, lung cancer, and other respiratory infections. These are the key concepts to remember in the discussion of respiratory system. The air we breathe goes through the nose, nasal passages, and then through the trachea or windpipe, which separates into two branches called bronchial tubes or bronchi, one entering each lung. The bronchi subdivide many times inside the lungs, analogous to the branching pattern of grapes, finally becoming hair-like tubes called bronchioles. In the last part of the terminal bronchioles are tiny bubble-like bunch of structures called alveoli or air sucks. When you breathe in or inhale, the diaphragm muscle contracts. Inhaling moves the diaphragm down and expands the chest cavity. Simultaneously, the ribs move up and increase the size of the chest cavity. There is now more space and less air pressure inside the lungs. Air pushes in from the outside where there is a higher air pressure. It pushes into the lungs where there is a lower air pressure. When you breathe out or exhale, the diaphragm muscle relaxes. The diaphragm and ribs return to their original place. The chest cavity returns to its original size. There is now less space and greater air pressure inside the lungs. It pushes the air outside where there is a lower air pressure. Air first enters your lungs and then into the left part of the heart. It is then driven by your heart into the bloodstream all the way through your body. The heart pumps blood which transports essential nutrients, oxygen, and other chemicals to every cell in your body. Once it reaches the cells, oxygen processes the nutrients to release energy. Carbon dioxide is given off during this process. The blood delivers carbon dioxide into the right portion of your heart from which it is pumped to the lungs. Carbon dioxide leaves your body through the lungs when you exhale. The following are the key concepts to remember in the discussion of circulatory system. The heart is a hollow muscular organ about the size of your fist, which is located in the center of your chest between the lungs. It is a double pump that pumps on the left and right sides. Every side is divided into two chambers, the atrium and the ventricle each of which has left and right portion, totaling to four chambers altogether. The top chamber is the atrium. The bottom chamber is called the ventricle. The valve acts as a one-way door, allowing blood to flow either forward into the next chamber or out of the heart. Each time your heart beats, it delivers oxygen-rich blood to your body, which allows it to function properly. Your heart rate or pulse is the number of times your heart beats in a minute. Shorter time intervals may be used in taking the pulse as long as it comes to 60 seconds upon multiplying with a factor. When you are resting, your heart rate slows down as your body does not need as much blood as it does when you exercise. Now that you are aware that strenuous activities may lead to an increased heart rate, you can now monitor your activities to avoid the dangers of cardiorespiratory diseases. Thank you class, you may now proceed to your activities.